life is filled with uncertainties, but some are beyond your biggest nightmares. So, your insurance premium will be $14,820, or $1,235 a month. What? Why? I used to pay three eighty five dollars a month. In the last several years, I had no accidents or tickets on my record. How come my premium jumped up more than three times? Well, it looks like two and a half years ago you had an accident, and you were found at fault. A lady rear-ended me, and she was at fault. Even the police officer agreed that it wasn't my fault. Here's what happened. In plain English, I got conned by the insurance company of the person at fault. My own insurance company at that time, the insurance arbitration system, and, as a result, got broke and almost went out of business because of that. Disclaimer. This video is not intended as legal advice in any shape or form. These are real-life experiences, designed to inform and help you make the right decision regarding the topics presented. How did this all happen? Please stay with me until the end to find out how innocent people can be victims of the big insurance companies. Hope you will gain knowledge and avoid these situations. Three years ago, I was driving my semi-truck on Interstate 10 in California for an early morning Los Angeles delivery. It was raining. The traffic suddenly stopped. I heard brakes screeching, and when I looked into my rearview mirror, I saw the car behind me spinning. A few moments later, the car rear-ended my truck, hitting the back of my trailer with its right side. I did what was right to do at that moment. I pulled over to the side and went to see what happened. Inside the car was a scared lady with a phone in her hand. Sir, I'm sorry. I was on the phone. I'm so glad the kids weren't with me. I asked, Are you okay? Do you need anything? She goes, Everything is fine. It was my fault. No worries. You can go now. Thanks for checking with me. She just had her front passenger door smashed, windows shattered, but everything else was good. I could have left then, but I wanted to do what's right and avoid future problems, so I called the police to see and witness what took place. The police officer arrived shortly. The lady admits that she wasn't paying attention and didn't adjust the speed according to the traffic condition. The police officer comes with me and looks at my truck and see that my rear bumper is full of glass and scratches, and there is no touch of my trailer sides, and he witnessed that this was a rear impact. He even gave me his number in case that there were any insurance issues, so he can testify that the lady hit me on the back. Meanwhile, the lady's boyfriend shows up, and he wants to exchange the insurance information. I asked him why does he need that, since she admitted that she was at fault. He said that he is legally entitled to have my information anyway. I had to give him my information. And here's where the whole insurance company scam started. The lady was insured by a very popular insurance company. They started calling me to ask me what happened. I told them the entire story. They offered me to go to a shop and fix my trailer bumper. The semi-trailer bumpers are very strong. We bump them at the docks every time, so there's nothing major to fix. I also had to keep driving to feed my family, so I said, I'm okay. Then they keep calling and asking the same questions countless times. They called me seven times during a few days trying to twist my mind. They called me early morning, late evening, during lunch, every time. Same questions, like I was interrogated for a crime. Insurance company claim adjuster. When did you hear the brake sound? Were you looking in your rear mirror then? Or after you heard that? When was the last time you checked the mirrors? When did you see the car coming? Etc. They told me that they need to clarify some details, and that they acknowledged that this was not my fault. Then suddenly they asked me one more time if I was in need of anything, told me that they will close the case, and I never heard from them again. They basically pulled me into their scheme. They harassed me until, at a certain point, I said something that they needed to hear from me, to use against me at a later time. When you get asked the same question different times, like they asked me, when did you hear the sound, and how soon did you see the car spinning? They were looking to create confusion so I would give them an uncertain answer. Then they can use that against me. Here's how I should have done it. 
1. Ideally, I should contact an insurance attorney and hand him all the situation. There are a lot of honest attorneys there that won't charge you for their service. Instead, we'll get your claim resolved and get paid by the party at fault. If you happen to find an attorney, you are all set. When the insurance company calls you, you just say, I don't feel well after the accident. Please call my lawyer. Here's the number. Then wait for everything to be taken care of. The insurance companies are scared by attorneys taking your case. They may settle before getting to court. 2. If you don't have an insurance attorney, stop picking up the phone when the insurance company calls you. Just say that you need some time to recover physically and emotionally after the accident, and ask them to please stop harassing you until you're ready to talk. Meanwhile, try to find a good insurance attorney. There are plenty in every city. Don't assume that just because you are not at fault, the insurance companies won't try to twist the truth to get you guilty. They always try that. Always claim the repairs you need. By saying that you are okay, in their vision, you're admitting guilt. Always ask them to repair your damages, even if they are just small scratches. 3. Never leave the scene of an accident until a police officer comes. Assume that everybody, even the nice and kind type of people, will change their mind and come against you. Even if they are nice, their insurance company will open a claim against you, and without you documenting what happened, it'll be their dirty game to make you pay. Let me show you how the insurance company conned me big time. They have up to two years to reopen the case in arbitration court. The insurance company of the person at fault, who by the way, accepted guilt on the spot, called me in arbitration court right before the two-year milestone. They said that I changed my position and want to hear from me again because they think I wasn't paying much attention at that time either. I didn't know I got called in court. My insurance company at that time, also con artists, did not let me know, and they didn't show up either. So, by not showing up, I lost. My insurance company at that time agreed to pay the other part $1,700 and raise my premium by more than $9,000 because of that claim. My insurance company got to charge me more because of it, so they gained. If I had known about the court date, I would have hired an insurance attorney. He would have contacted the police officer who came to the accident scene and examined my truck and the other car. He would have definitely subpoenaed the party at fault's phone record and showed that she was using the phone while driving. And he would have made a case for me that would have showed the harassment of the insurance company claim adjuster who continuously called me to play with my mind. And this, my friends is my story of how I got conned by the insurance companies, both mine and the other parties. Please like, share, comment, and hit the subscribe button so more people can benefit from these videos. I have many more real-life situations regarding insurance companies, rental car companies, DMV late fee tips, collection companies scammers, roadside assistance rip-offs, insurance claims, repairing shop schemes, and many more. Thanks for watching.